Welcome to edupediaworld.com. In today's video, we are going to learn about friction. So what is friction? We have seen in the earlier videos that frictional force acts opposite to the motion of the object. So friction force is that force which opposes the motion of the object which is moving. In other words, we can say that it is the enemy of the motion of the object which is moving when a force is applied. Thus, we can now define friction as a force resisting the relative motion of solid surface, liquid layers and material elements sliding against each other. Now just have a look at the diagram which is flashed on the screen. Now we can see that we have an object here which is placed over a surface. The object is given a push, a, for, a small force is applied. So the motion of the object is towards right. Now this is the force of friction which acts opposite to the direction of the motion. And this frictional force is always applied in order to restrict the movement of the object. Now, let us take a small example. You all must have sat on a swing. What happens when somebody pushes you? When somebody applies a force, then the swing starts swinging. What happens when he stops applying force? After some time, the swing will automatically come to a stop. Why is it so? It is because of the frictional force that is applied opposite to the direction of the motion of the swing. This is a frictional force that opposes the motion of the swing and ultimately restricts the motion and gets it to a halt. This force is called as a frictional force. Now let us consider another example. We all must have played with small toys like a toy car. Now I have taken a toy car here. Let's say I apply a small force to the toy car. The toy car moves to the right and then comes to a halt. Why is it so? Why does the car come to a halt? That is because there is this force of friction which is known as a frictional force that is applied on the toy car in the direction opposite to the direction of the motion of the toy car. So this frictional force is applied which restricts the movement of the car and the car comes to a stop. Now this is because the car is in contact with the ground. This can be understood by further examples. Now consider, there's a person sitting on the boat, he's trying to row the boat. Now there are two forces acting. One force is the force which is applied by the person who is rowing the boat. And the other force which acts opposite to the direction of the motion of this boat is called the frictional force. Now because there's only a single person who's sitting on this boat, so now there's the friction force is very large in this case. Because of the small frictional force, the person is able to cover only a small distance while rowing the boat alone. Now let's consider that now there are four people who are trying to row the boat. What happens? Collectively, these four people are applying, let's say, force F1. The frictional force that is applied in the opposite direction to the motion of this boat is let's say F2. Now because there are four people who are trying to row the boat, so the, the amount of the force is very large and hence the frictional force becomes very less here. So when the frictional force is less, these four people will be able to cover much larger distance as compared to when there was only one person trying to move the boat. Now, what kind of a force is a frictional force? We have already studied about contact force and non-contact force. What kind of force is friction force? Is it a contact force or, or non-contact force? First of all, what is the definition of a contact force? A contact force is that force which is applied when there are two objects that are in contact with each other. 
what is important is that the two objects that is the surface or the object should be interacting with each other now i have taken a small example here let's say i have a ball and a small force is applied onto the ball what happens the ball moves forward and comes to a halt now why is it so it is because of the frictional force that is acting opposite to the direction of the motion of the ball but this friction force will be acting only when the ball is in contact with the surface if there is no surface there won't be any friction force so what is important for the friction force to be acting is that the ball should be in contact with the surface that is the two objects the two surfaces should be in contact with each other so now we have understood that a frictional force is a contact force because if there is no contact between two objects or two surfaces there won't be any friction there has to be an interaction between the two surfaces thus we can say that friction is a contact force now let's move forward i have given you a few examples of how the friction is uh, produced uh, for example a very common example is the rubbing of hands when we rub both our hands then there is friction which is generated which is created between both the hands and because of this friction heat is produced that is why when we keep rubbing our hands for a long time we feel warm between our hands other example it is a very common example a person slipping over banana that is exactly because banana the surface of banana is very smooth and over a smooth surface friction is very less and that's why whenever people stamp on banana people slip now that we have learned about what is friction let's also talk about factors that affect friction firstly the kind of material or we can say the kind of surface we have a picture on the slide let's have a look on to the left there's a girl she's trying to skate on the ice whereas the boy is trying to slide on the grass what do you think is easy which activity is easy is it easy to slide over the ice or slide on grass obviously because ice is a smooth surface so the friction is very less and that's why the girl is able to do her activity she's in, she's able to enjoy the sport very easily she's able to slide very smoothly whereas the boy will find it difficult to slide over the grass because the grass is a rough surface and over a rough surface the force of friction is very large and so he finds it difficult to slide so what is important is that if the surface is rough then the force of friction will be large whereas if the surface is smooth then the force of friction is very very small again the nature of the surface it is also same as the kind of the surface that we have studied earlier if the surface is smooth then the friction will be very less and we require only small push just to push this object whereas on the other hand if the same object is placed over a rough surface then the force of friction will be very high and therefore the boy needs to give a big push to the object so as to move the object so if the object is rough very high friction if the object is smooth then the force of friction will be less so the nature of the surface also affects friction lastly the weight of the object what happens if i have two weights here one is weighing 5 kg another one is weighing 15 kg and if i give a push to both the objects look at this the object which is weighing lesser that is 5 kg moves faster and covers large distance whereas i have to give lot of force lot of force should be applied on to the weight which is weighing 15 kg so as to move the object to the equal distance so when the weight is more the friction is very very high the friction force is very large and so the object doesn't move so fast 
So the weight of the object is also one of the factor which affects friction. Now, let's see a few more examples. You all must have seen tires of your car, your four-wheeler or your two-wheelers, your bikes, your scooty or for that matter, your bicycle. What do you see? You see some kind of designs made on the tires. What do you think these designs are for? Are they for beautification of your tires? No. Apart from the beautification, these designs, they play a very important role. These designs on the tires make the tire very rough, thus reducing the force of friction. And when the force of friction is reduced, there are hardly any chance of slipping. You won't slip. Your bike won't slip. Your bicycle will not slip if these designs are made. Similar designs you must have seen on your shoes or your slippers. This is because they make the surface of the shoes or the slippers rough. And because of rough surface, the friction force is very large and we will be able to, you know, walk on the ground nicely. We will not slip off uh, because of our shoes or our slippers. So we have now learnt about what is friction. What are the various factors that affect friction? In the next video, we will learn about the advantages and disadvantages of friction and also what is rolling and sliding friction. Thanks for watching the video.